Hey everyone, Phoenix Spring Tarot. So in this pick a card reading, what we'll be looking at is no contact. So pick someone that you have no contact with. And the question is, what are they thinking? Do they still think about you? So we have four piles here. Pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, pile number four. Go with your first instincts. You can choose more than one pile as well. Timestamps are down in the description box below. And I will start with pile number one. See you in your pile. Okay, so pile number one. So no, so this reading is no contact. What are they thinking? Do they still think about you? One thing I meant to say in the introduction is that this is going to be a very brutally honest reading. I'm not going to hold back with any fluff or make things seem better than they are. So trigger warning, be prepared for that. Okay. All right, let's get into this. So think of your person or as I go through this reading, a person may appear because the messages that are coming through trigger something in you and makes you resonate with a different person. Okay, let's start. So what I'm getting with this 13 that reduces to a four, look at this image really carefully. I see that this person are having come in contact with you and you guys separating and not being in contact anymore. I feel what is coming through with this image here is that this person is getting their shiz together. The impact of you being in their life and not being in contact with you anymore has focus has made them focus on why did the situation situationship break down. And it's really shone a light for them on the shadow aspects of themselves that they need to get in order, that they need to be better at basically. So what I'm seeing with this person, could be male, could be female, gender neutral reading, is that they're getting themselves in order, they're getting their stuff in order, and they're bringing in different strands and different elements of themselves that may have contributed to the situation or to the breakdown of the situation. They are bringing those together to sort of, how should I put it, heal it, be better at it, recognize it, transmute the negative aspects of them that led to the breakdown so that they be, could become whole and they can raise their vibration. That's what I'm getting here with regards to this person. Okay, the next card we have is allowing. Radical acceptance says yes to reality in any given moment. So what's needed can come next. Yeah, that's what I'm picking up. There's a lot of healing. This person here, whoever this person is, is doing a lot of inward work, a lot of inward shadow work and healing to become a better person. Dare I say they may be doing this to become a better person either to come back or to want to make amends to you. So don't be surprised if this person may come back and make a, a want to reach out or make amends. Whether they do or not, I definitely feel that they want to make amends because you triggered and inspired them to do this healing work. Okay, but let's continue. We'll do some tarot. And then we have Surrender 91. What's in really interesting, this 9 and this 1 reduces to a 10, reduces to a 1. So someone is letting go of an aspect of themselves in order to become whole. Which is exactly what we picked up in this image here. It's different strands and they're becoming whole. As you could see with this rainbow, their chakras, which were previously out of alignment, previously scattered. They've done a lot of self-work. They've done a lot of healing work for their chakras to be aligned. So they're letting go of the negative aspects of the negative element of whoever they were or their personalities. And they are healing. They're healing their, their past trauma. Stay up. Okay, fine. Let's get into the tarot and get some detail. So what else are they thinking? Let's get some detail for this. What are they thinking? Actually, I want to move on actually. Let's ask another question. What do they think about you? Pound number one. So pound number one, what do they think about you? 
what I'm picking up here, my deck was upside down, so I'll turn this. In fact, I'll take it upside down, actually, even though my deck was upside down. So we have the devil that we're getting here in terms of what they think of you. Let me... Hmm. Interesting. Because my deck was upside down, I turned it the right way up. Oh, something interesting is going on here. Something really interesting. This... This has never happened to me before. I don't read reversal, that's why. I read cards upright, but they're insisting on these cards coming through reverse. So we have the devil and the three of pentacles. This was quite, and they were both reverse, so I'll take them as reverse. This situation was a really, really toxic situation. Is what's coming through here. It was a toxic situation that someone broke out of. I'm picking up, there was... There was a gaslighting energy where someone wanted to do whatever they wanted to do and they would gaslight the other person into thinking that it was all right. Someone couldn't be grounded or be in one place and be disciplined enough to give and provide the other person what they needed. There was always some excuse and even if I'm not sure which party it is would set an ultimatum and want to keep with it, there was a lack of boundary control. So you would try to set an ultimatum or you would try to discuss something as to what made a person unhappy. They would try to discuss it, but it never came to anything. It was never taken seriously. So you always seem to be on a hamster wheel of gaslighting and a hamster wheel of toxic behavior. A hamster wheel of control. That's what's coming through here. Let's see what else we get. Someone was always stepping out and cheating or getting other people involved in this dynamic between you two. Or it could be that there were a group of people involved. Again, we have three. So this could be a group of people, like a group of friends or... This could be a relationship in which someone got themselves involved that led to the splitting up of it. But as you could see, there are people walking away here. So there are a number of you, pile number one. So there'll be a number of different situations. But the two situations that are coming through very clearly to me is that someone was stepping out for a romantic relationship. Someone was stepping out of that relationship constantly. For one situation, for pal number one, that's what I'm getting. It's like they got a... Th I'm being told that they got a thrill out of stepping out and doing it. There was some lack of confidence that they had and they were constantly stepping out to get a thrill or getting needs met. Is what I'm picking up for some of you in this pile. For others, I'm being told as if it's... A group of people, dare I say for some of you it may be a work situation, but it's a group where it's a to like a, I'm being told like a toxic work environment with a manager that you've since left and separated from and you just realize, you know what, this situation isn't going to be working out for me anymore. Allow it, man. I'm out, <laughs> you know, and you just left it. If this manager or this person that you had that conflict with, so it doesn't need to be a manager. It could be just another person in a team that you're working with or another department, whoever it is, right? They, You just walked away from it. They felt that they had the upper hand. You didn't care. You didn't care whether they felt like they had the upper hand or not. It wasn't your business. You just couldn't be asked anymore. And you've just walked away from the situation. So those are the two main themes, part number one, that I'm picking up. So just go with what resonates with you. Okay. What else? What else is coming through here? So what else do they think about you? So given that we have the scenarios set up, what do they think about you? They think very highly of you. They think very, very highly of you. Dare I say there is a bit of, I'm hearing out of my league and jealous of you as well. There is something unique that you have, like a je ne sais quoi that you have that they don't. If they had the opportunity and if they had the courage to, if they had the backbone to, I'm being told, they would rush right back to you. 
they want back in actually look they're rushing wanting back in with you and being told for some of you that you may have people in common and if you do they keep tabs on you that way of course through the social media but i'm mainly hearing through other people some of them yeah I'm not getting that you particularly care or the advice is. This is not a situation to come back to, by the way. Um, what I'm seeing is that you guys are very focused on yourselves and improving yourselves and bettering yourselves. You guys are just thriving after this situation. Dare I say that you guys, the fact that you guys have been able to thrive is what has motivated them to also do their own self-healing. Okay, what else could we get? What else? What are they thinking about you right now? Well, if they wanted to come back in, they so would. What else? Yeah. They are very much afraid that this is over. They feel that with the Four of Pentacles, yeah. Did you guys walk away from this situation, actually? Yeah, lots of infighting. I'm just wondering whether you guys were the ones to walk away from this. Let me get my pendulum. I'm just wondering whether you guys were the ones to walk away from this or whether you guys gave them an ultimatum, an ultimatum which they didn't meet. But I'm feeling that for you guys, pile number one, looking in on this reading, you guys were the ones to just say no. Nah. Even if they came back to you guys with this death card, I'm saying no, this is not something that you're tolerating, that you're going to be tolerating at all. You, you don't tolerate this type of energy, pal number one. You guys learned a lot from it. And with the four of pentacles, what I'm picking up is that you guys learned that not to be treated like this again, or not to have someone treat you like this. From this situation, pal number one, you learned how to have better boundaries when it comes to people. Definitely better boundaries when it comes to people. This situation, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a karmic partnership or a karmic situation in which you learned lessons about yourself. You were able to heal karmic wounds and move on. It's like your whole belief system changed. And many of you have moved on with this Eight of Cups to do healing. Because this row, and you guys have healed, because this row represents you, pile number one. So what they're seeing of you is you guys either pulled back, pulled away. You guys were the one with the death card that ended it. You guys with this death card and with this eight of cups, you guys were the ones to walk away from this situation. You guys just had enough. Because the fighting to be heard, the fighting to be seen, the fighting to be understood was just intense. And this is where pile number one, that some of you, there were more than, there were a group, again, I'm coming back to a group of people being involved here. Okay, so let's ask the pendulum. Let's do um, a pendulum question to wrap this up. So for pile number one, so this is no contact. Would you guys get together? Okay, this is a no. <laughs> so this is just a... I just thought, let me just do this pendulum at the end of this, whether you guys would be getting back together again. This is a no. Do they... Would they want to get back together with you? Yes, they would. Would you want to get back together with them or get back in this situation? And that's a no. It's going anti-clockwise. All right, so pile number one, I am going to leave it there. Let me know what you think. We're keeping this, we're keeping these readings short, sharp, and sweet. Okay, I'll either see you in other piles or I'll see you in a future reading. Bye for now. All right, so pile number two. So the topic is no contact. Do they think about you and what are they thinking? right now okay in this no contact relationship or situationship so pile number two you chose this card number 46 which reduces to a 10 and therefore a one so what we're seeing here in this image is someone wearing a blindfold and holding puzzle pieces 
right? What I'm picking up as we see this is someone, not a blindfold, but a mask. What I'm picking up here is someone who is not showing up as their true self, someone who is putting on a facade, someone who is putting on a particular face. And what I'm seeing is that in this no contact situation, they may be giving the, they may either through the relationship may not have been showing their true selves in the relationship or in this phase of no contact, they're putting on or giving the impression, they're giving one impression that's not quite the truth. What I'm also seeing as well is that this impression that they're giving, they're giving everyone a different impression of themselves. So no one sees the full them. No one sees the true authentic version of them. Everyone has a piece of the puzzle. Everyone has a little piece, but no one sees the full picture. And that's by design for them. So as I'm saying with the cat hair, this with cats, cats are always truth seekers and cats always know when someone's the truth, where someone's genuine. It's like the cat or the queen of wands, you know, being able to see the truth. And what I'm picking up here, pile number two, is that you guys may have seen through this facade or pile number two, they may have done something that made you see through the facade and you realize that they were not turning up as their authentic selves. They were turning up at, at, they may have either been hiding something from you not being genuine not being having integrity that's also what i'm picking up here as well so this could be during the relation during the situationship or relationship that led to the demise of it or this could be once the demise happened this person is not being genuine or not being true or giving a true impression of what led to the no contact. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what else we could pick up about this person. Spirit guides, guardian angels of the light. What else about this person that pile number two has no contact with? What else could you say about this person that pile number two has no contact with? You're not the only person that they act like this with. There are a number, I'm being told that there's a reckoning that's going to come really soon where people are going to begin to talk or they're going to become, begin to realize that, that this person isn't who they say they are. They're not genuine. They don't turn up as their full selves. It's something about this person's manners, something about what they do where they're not turning up as their full selves. Loss. Sometimes you learn a true offering through loss. You make a passionate invitation for love to take over and bring her own plan instead of the egos. So I'm picking up here that they feel that they've truly lost something here. Because this is about them. This is their energy and what they're feeling in this energy at the moment. So that's what they're feeling with this no contact situation. They are feeling a sense of loss. Although it's appearing that they are the reason for this no contact. But I'm seeing that they may be putting on a facade to show that they're holding up with it better than they are. Something about a face that they're putting up that's false. But underneath they are feeling a sense of loss with regards to this. What else could we say about this pile number two? What else could we say about your person, pile number two? What else could we say about your person? Surrender. This person may have given up on this situation and may have agreed that there isn't any going forward here, but we'll see. Let's see in pile number two. Let's see in the tarot. So let's get let's dig a bit deeper into this. Pile number two, let's see what they're thinking, what's on their minds right now. So in this no contact situation, what's on their minds right now? In this no contact situation, what's on their minds right now? Hmm. 
Queen of Swords reverse. I do not take reversals, but we have a Queen of Swords reverse here. Interesting. They feel the pile number. Okay, let me just get one more. Okay, what are they thinking? Reason for this two of Queen of Swords reverse. What is the reason for this Queen of Swords reverse? What is the reason for this Queen of Swords reverse? They want to move on from this situation and being shown, but at the moment they don't know how. So when we have a Queen of Swords reverse, so Queen of Swords upright is someone who, you know, is very sure of themselves. They're very grounded. They work with logic regarding a situation. Whereas I feel, as this card says, her own plan instead of ego, I feel in this situation, this person, pile number two, is still stuck a lot in their ego. They're still stuck in justifying their behavior. They don't want to take responsibility for the, the part that they played in the no contact, is what I'm picking up here. They are looking to move on. You know, they don't, it's everyone else's fault but theirs. That's the impression that they're giving. That's the false impression that they're giving. That's the line they're going to stick to. And they are looking to move forward, either with this Ace of Wands, either with a new relationship, new situationship, whatever it is, they're looking to move on. That's the idea. But they don't quite know with the shop card how they're going to move on yet. But they just want to move on, you know, like a rebound situation. That's what I'm picking up on pile number two. It's like they're rebounding right now. They don't want to take, they're, they're feeling a lot of loss, they're feeling a lot of hurt, they're feeling a lot of pain, but they just want to rebound. Here they are, seven of um, pentacles, just reaching up and choosing something, the next best thing, whatever it is. Sevens represents an, um, something that's not quite ready yet, right? It's not quite ready yet, it hasn't quite ripened yet. So notice that their hand is extended to the lowest hanging fruit. Instead of grabbing a pentacle, which is fully formed, they're grabbing the stuff that's closest to them, low-hanging fruit. So they're going for low-hanging fruit opportunity. Anything to get over the sense of loss. So in terms of what they're thinking, pile number two, they are in rebound mode. Okay? So what do they, pile number two, what do they think about you? Mm -hmm. How do they view you, pile number two? How do they see you? What do they think about you, pile number two? Let's see. Spirit guys got the angels of the light. What do they ooh, think? This may be too many cards. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Remember when I gave that trigger warning at the beginning? They view you guys, it's as if in terms of this no contact situation, they view you guys as very frosty, as very, like you guys have shut down in this. There is a fear from their perspective that they would really, really lose you. Inwardly, there's a fear that they would really lose you with this world card. That you're leaving this situation behind. They view you guys as, and please don't shoot the messenger pile number two, of being petulant, as being young, as being not understanding certain things, this situation. Like with this... um. With this page of swords, you are the ones who are unreasonable because pages are like children, right? So you are the one who is unreasonable. You're the one who has a lot of a lot to learn about this situationship or about the reason why something broke down. 
you know everything is your fault and you are the ones who are out in the cold having to learn this lesson that's the impression that they're giving about you or that's how they really think about you when it comes to you again deep down if they were really honest with themselves and not putting on a facade they would acknowledge their loss but they're in their ego right so their ego is preventing them from really grounding in how they feel about this situation with this world card they've also view you as moving on right they view you as moving on that is why they're rebounding that's why they want to rebound that's why they want to just give the impression that they're doing something that um any impression they they can give so that they don't look like so that they don't look to other people as if they were left behind or you walked away or a lot of this is facade and what other people think about them they even have a facade where they can't fully connect with their own thoughts is what i'm picking up here as well they even have problems connecting to that, to their own thoughts, to their own emotions. They have problems connecting to it. And this has been going on from relationships and situationships. They don't connect with themselves. They put up a facade. Okay. In fact, they would prefer to surrender this and talk BS about you. If it allows them to maintain the image that they want to maintain. But the more they do it, the more they lose themselves. This was an important... Yep, I'm being told pile number two with these three cards here. So we have judgment. Notice you are moving on from this situation. You've learned pile number two... This may seem a bit harsh, but there's a lot, pound number two, that you guys have learned about this. You've learned a lot about what makes you unique and special, even if they rejected it, even if they didn't want to value it. And in terms of the next cycle and phase that you are moving on to, you're doing a lot of healing from this, pound number two, a lot of healing of your heart chakra, I'm particularly picking up on. There's a lot of healing that you're doing from this situation in your next cycle in your next phase but whatever it is with this healing you are coming to understand even though they did not appreciate and see how unique you were you're moving into a phase where you would be attracting other people who would respect you other people who do understand and recognize your worth other people who would want to elevate you in your worth this person didn't understand that, but they were important to you for a reason. This situation is going to make you understand your worth. And that was the lesson that you needed to learn. Not understanding your worth may have come from past situationships, from past relationships, and you're realizing that you're connecting the dots, pile number two. You're connecting the dots as to the reason why you were in this situation or why you attract people like this who are emotionally unavailable. You're connecting those dots. You're learning the lessons. You're understanding what makes you unique. Pile number two, I'm being told you're a very empathetic, bright light soul. So you attract a lot of people to you, especially a lot of wounded warriors like this person, pile number two. So you have to be careful and in this next cycle and this next phase, you're going to, I'm seeing with the hermit isolation energy, you, this has taught you a very important lesson as to how to set up your boundaries. So you don't feel sorry for people and you don't let any and everyone in, <laughs> you know. You're going to learn to be more boundaried and attract people who are on your frequency and attract people who really deserve to be in the presence of your energy, power number two. Okay, so pile number two, that is it from me. I hope this resonated with you. If it did, let me know down below. Like and subscribe. If you would like to leave a comment, I always respond to comments and I like them. I just want to see whether it resonates with you or not. It would be great to hear. So pile number two, I'll see you in another pile or I'll see you in future readings. Bye for now.
All right, pile number three. So in this reading, we'll be looking at a person or a situation ship that you have no contact with. And the question is, what are they thinking in this space of time with no contact? And do they think about you? Okay, so pile number three, this is the card that your image you all chose. And let me just say, I didn't say this in the introduction, but this is going to be a short, sharp, brutally honest reading. So if you know that the situation ship or the person that you're inquiring about, if you know it's still sensitive for you and still quite raw, then this may not be the reading for you. OK, I'm just saying that because we're going to be brutally honest here. OK, so pile number three, who is your person? Card 52. So the energies that I'm picking up regarding your person is that they are very determined. They are very determined. They are very focused. They know their purpose. They know what their destiny is. They have tunnel vision when it comes to that. And they would not allow anyone to get in their way. They are very well studied. They're very articulate. They're very intelligent. They are a person of the world. Or, or they may have the gift of the gap. <laughs> right? And they could talk circles around you because they're very sharp. They're very quick witted. Right? They're very quick with it. And they've learned to be that way, you know, to put on the persona of confidence because they are just so naked. They have a naked ambition is another phrase that I'm being told by my spirit guides and they don't take no for an answer. If you are aligned to and if you could help them on their way to wherever it is they, you, they need to go, whatever their goal is, brilliant, you would be their best friend. If you are slightly out of alignment with them, God help you, basically, because they are very determined. Is that you're with them or you're against them? Like there's no in between when it comes to them. In relationships or situationships, they always need to be the head. They need to be the leader. They need to be viewed as such. They're very thin skinned when it comes to their ego. OK, let's see what else we have to describe them. 55, we have adventure, 5-5, five, five, that rounds to 10. Yeah, but I could see them also being adventure-oriented. They're very, inter you know, they're not afraid of a challenge. They're not afraid of putting themselves out there. They're not backward coming forward at all. So I can see that. And they're very well-traveled also. They're open to experiences. They are very good bounce back from adversity as well. And 10, karmic completion. Notice that we have five and five, that's 10, and we have 10 here as well. Interesting. And we have a five here also. So dare I say there is, this person could be a karmic connection for you guys, pal number three. That they were brought into your lives to sort of, I'm being told, crack you open, is the phrase that I'm being told here. They are brought into your life to crack you open, to give you an example of what it's like to not play it safe. But whatever the situation is, it's a no contact. And what this is saying, your spirit guides are letting you know that your interaction with them or the phase and the season of your life that you're meant to have this interaction with them is coming either coming to an end or has ended with this karmic completion. And the next card we have to describe this person is delusion. Um, intention without surrender can be a fast path to, del to delusion. So this is, was something I was picking up as well, which was quite interesting. It's, they're the sort of fake it till you make it sort as well. Or they could be, delusion is a very strong word here. I'm picking up that. I'm wondering, I'm hearing the word narcissist when it comes to them. Or it could appear like that or borderline narcissism where they have an inflated sense of self. But again, that's the fake in it till you make it. Okay, so pile number three, in terms of this person that we've described, what are they, in terms of this no contact space, what are they thinking? As you guys have no contact, what are they thinking? 
So Stragai's Garden Angels at the highest light, four pound number three, this person that they have no contact with. What are they thinking right now? What's going through this person's mind right now? Eight of Pentacles. This is the reason why I gave my disclaimer at the very beginning. Again, they are doing what they do best. They are pushing forward. They are pushing forward with whatever they are doing. Pile number three. Now, when it comes to relationship or situationship reads, the energies could be either way. So this could also be you. It could be that you're pushing ahead or it could be that they're pushing ahead. It could be that you're both pushing ahead. But what they're thinking is they're caught up in themselves and the next thing. They're caught up in themselves. They're caught up in the next thing. They're sort of putting their heads down and getting on with it. That's what they're thinking. Okay, so... Spirit of God, God and Angels, what else is this person in Pile 3? Pile 3 has no contact with. What else are they thinking? Ah, we have the Magician Reverse. I don't take reversals. I don't know how my deck is an upright deck. I don't do reversals, but I'll take this one. Again, there is something with them. A Magician Reverse is not a good energy, I have to say. There is something, along with the delusion card, there is something with this person that's not trustworthy, that's very, how slippery is the best phrase I could find for it. There's something slippery. In the, in the UK with East End people, we'll call them a Del Boy. Like there's something very, and I'm using Del Boy in a gender neutral perspective, but there's something slippery about them. You can't quite put to your finger on them let's see explain this um magician reverse for guys got an angels explain this magician reverse <coughs> explain this magician reverse i'm being told that this is a re a bruised ego so someone's had their egos a bit bruised by you pile number three Someone's had, yeah, someone's had their egos bruised. So I'm being told, and your, your reading is very similar to pile number two, that they may on the surface just be getting on with it. But underneath the surface here, as we could see with the hermit, they are reflecting on this situation. They're reflecting on it. Their ego is a bit bruised. But dare I say that this magician reverse is preventing them from really learning the true lessons that they need to learn from this situation. Hence, this delusion card makes sense. They would be grounding themselves in whatever story or fairy tale. They're creating a story and a fairy tale with this magician reverse. With whatever story suits them and suits their purposes of moving forward. That's what I'm picking up here. In terms of what they're thinking. Yep. Four of swords. Like they've completely. I'm just seeing retreat. With them. Like with the four of swords and the hermit. They have retreated. From. Um, you know with Taylor Swift's. Look what you made me do song. I would like to. What did she say at the end? I would like to separate myself from this narrative. Or something like that. Yeah. This is what's happening here with them. This is the thing with them. They are so brutally determined and pushing forward that you're either with them or you're against them. If you're against them, they will completely leave you out in the cold and separate yourself. And they're brutal in terms of how they do that. They have taken themselves. In fact, by their absence and their coldness of this no contact is intentional. It's passive aggressive is the energy that I'm picking up here. Okay, so that's what they're thinking. Their separation and this coldness, if it's hurting you and if you're concerned about it, that's mission accomplished for them is what I'm picking up on. Okay, one more card in terms of what they're thinking. They could be petty labelle. They would prefer to be wrong and strong and dig their heels in and keep busy to distract themselves. One more card for what they are thinking. Yep. 
and they would this is them just that you are being replaced as we speak pile number three you're being replaced by other people who they, who could who could get behind them and their vision that's the thing notice that we have the sun here and with this image we have the sun as well so wherever the sun is shining in terms of where they move forward to that's where they would go you have been replaced they have given you the cold shoulder that that cold that arctic cold that you're feeling from them it is very much intentional they are moving on Okay, so pile number three, let's go into, so this is what they are thinking, you know, in terms of they're just moving on with themselves, they have just taken away from this narrative, they're moving on. Now, let's dig a bit deeper into what they think about you. Would they want to reach out to you? Would they want to expect you to reach out to them? Spirit guys, God and angels. What do what does this person think of pile number three? They think, oh my goodness, really? Pile number three, do they think that you're gonna come crawling back to them? Ah. According to them. With the Ten of Cups. Hmm, let's clarify this Ten of Cups. For guys, Guardian Angels, please clarify this Ten of Cups. For guys, Guardian Angels, please clarify this Ten of Cups. I think I have it, but... Okay, one more. Guys, hang on, hang on, just one more. What this is, what do they think about you? Hmm. They are quite delusional, pal number three. <laughs> oh my gosh, I said delusional and then the delusional card has come up. They really feel... Yep, lovers below the deck. Thank you very much. Right, we have it. They really feel with this delusional card that there is no way that you could find better than them or as good as them. Whether it's a friend, whether it's a romantic, they really feel that you cannot find as good as them. With this five of swords, you may decide to meet up with other people, as you can see here with other people, and you'd be disappointed. So this is you looking, moving on from them as well, and they feel that you would never get as good as them if you move on, right? The reason why that they are so, del and this is it, they feel that with this lover's card, they are the best thing to happen to you. Or you may have been really deep down, if they're honest with themselves, the best thing to have happened to them with this lover's card. You know, the bond between you, when it's good, it's good, but when it's bad, it's really bad. But when it's good, it's good. And that's how they're viewing it. But the thing is with this, that I'm looking at, is that with this high priestess, file number three, you're being advised by your spirit guides that if you think that you have an inkling of, should I go back to them? Should I? They're saying no. They're saying that this karmic cycle is complete. Your season with them is complete. What they're advising you to do with the high priestess is tune into your worth. Tune into what you've learned from this experience, the good and the bad, and what qualities do you think the good qualities do you think that you could pick up and carry into your next cycle this is what spirit guides are advising you to do and it's interesting pile number three but the other piles i haven't had spirit guides give advice all the other piles have been talking about what they think and whether you're getting back and whatever but spirit guides are saying 
you're in the space now where you have to learn the lessons from this situation. And when you've learned the lessons from this situation, what is coming through for you is a hundred times better, ten times better than staying with them. Because this is what you are coming up for you. Contentment, happiness, your soul tribe coming in, attracting people who are on your frequency, who enjoy the things that you enjoy. You're not being someone else's cheerleader anymore, right? With this six of pentacles, this, I feel that what they don't see about you, pal number three, is that you guys have good qualities in your own rights. But because they're so egocentric and bombastic and everything needs to be done on a grand scale, pal number three is I'm picking up that you guys have brilliance, but in an understated way. Sorry, that doesn't... You guys have brilliance, but it's a brilliance that is sophisticated, I'm being told. You guys have something that they can't value or see because they're just, again, I'm coming back to them being delusional. It's something you guys have a particular quality, pile number three, that they have underestimated. I feel, pile number three, they have underestimated you. And pile number three, in terms of your final message, what I'm being told is that in a few months time, as you guys grow, as you guys take the advice from the high priestess, you guys take the opportunity to heal, you guys take the opportunity to learn your lessons and so on. What's coming through is that you would even eclipse them and they would be the ones looking at you and thinking, oh my gosh, what did I do? What happened here? I didn't expect that. Oh, I knew pile number three. Yeah, I knew them. You know, you'd become one of their stories where they'd want to associate with you, where they'd want to be associated with you to form part of their stories, to give a positive impression to other people. There is something of un there's something that's understated an understated, I don't know why I keep on using the word understated, I'm not even sure whether it's the right word, but there is something of a brilliance, there's something more solid and grounded and pure that you guys have, number three, that's being, dare I say, wasted or lost on this person, that's how I would phrase it, yeah, you guys are elevated, you guys are moving up to something grander and better, I can't go into that because this reading is just about no contact and we're going into something else. But I'm being told that you guys could feel it. You know you deserve better. You know you have better to give. You weren't being seen in your entirety. There's a humility, there's a groundedness about you that people like this don't appreciate. But this karmic cycle has come about for you guys to connect with that, to connect with that humility, groundedness, and to understand and appreciate that there's value in that, value that will take you much farther than being delusional. Okay, pile number three, that's it from me. I hope this resonated with you. If it did, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. You could check another pile. If you um, would like further messages or you could check one of my other readings on this channel. But anyway, pound number three, best of luck with this and bye for now. Okay, so pile number four. So this reading is no contact. What are they thinking in this period of no contact and what do they think about you? So pile number four, what I didn't say in the introduction is that in this reading, this is going to be a brutally honest reading. Right. So if the person that you're thinking of or that you have in your mind's eye, if you know it's quite a sensitive situation, if you know it's quite raw, then this may not be the appropriate time to view this. Um, this may not be an appropriate reading for you because we're just going to be really honest here. So you could probably try one of another reading on my channel at this point. OK. All right. So let's move forward. So. Card, pile number four, you guys chose pile number, this image, number 37, which rounds off to a 10. 
what I'm immediately picking up with this is that you guys, whether you like it or not, are always going to be connected. And you all have been, oh sorry, I'm just going to go into your person. You guys are always going to be connected. And you guys have been connected for a couple of lifetimes now. So you guys have lived different lifetimes through the years, centuries back in the Renaissance period, Victorian period. Um, I'm even being told the 1940s, 1960s as well. You guys have reincarnated in different dynamics. So you guys could have been um, siblings together. You guys could have been husband and wife. You guys could have been um, in the same family. Far One would have been the father, the other been the daughter, reverse. But whatever it is, you all have gone through lifetimes together in this connection. Wanting to experience different living life situations together. That's what I'm picking up on here. So in this period of separation, you would find that both of you, if you feel that you can't help but think about this person, know that they can't help but think about you as well, right? There's a fated connection here. I'm hearing the term twin flame, but I don't like using... I don't know, because twin, the phrase twin flame means so many different things to different people because it's just been so watered down, but you get the idea. Okay, so what else about this person? Outrageous openness. There's another card about them. Dear love, open me to your will. Release me from my attachment. Surprise and delight me with your plan. You know what's needed and I am open to receive. There we go. This person is thinking about you guys and they're sort of hoping for a miracle, an opportunity to reconnect. They may have been mulling, going over you again and again and again. And they are opening this up to the universe and they're asking the universe to get involved. They're asking for divine intervention in this situation here. So what? Oh, we have three cards about your person. OK, I expected there to be one. I don't know if the decks have had one, but let's pull them all up. All right, so we have love. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. We have love. We have music. And we have forgiveness. This is the only pile where I've gotten this message. In fact, I'm, I'm actually going to ask the pendulum pile number. I'm going to check in with the pendulum. Okay, so we have a no contact situation. Spare guys, guardian angels of the light. Does for does this person want to get back with pile number four? Yeah, that's a yes. Clockwise is a yes. Does pile number four want to get back with this person? This is a maybe. That's interesting. I'm seeing a maybe here. I'm seeing a maybe. Okay. All right, pile number fours. Let's get into this. What deck do I want? Let's try this deck. So it could be that this person, whoever it is, there's something of a, something that's happened that requires forgiveness or a situation that. Something may have happened, a situation ship or someone wants forgiveness or has been asking for forgiveness and the other person is thinking about it. But whatever this is, from this person's perspective, there is love and they are open to moving forward. They are open to being vulnerable with you. What I would say, pile number three, is... Anyway, let's get into the let's get into the tarot for a bit more detail first. Let's get into what they're thinking. So, so far with this person, they're open to being vulnerable with you. There's something about love, love still being there for this situation ship, and wanting to, and wanting forgiveness. Whether forgiveness with the outrageous openness, we're getting reconnection as well. But let's get some more detail into what they're thinking. 
Let's get into more details. The Spirit Guides, Father and Angels of the Highest Order, provide us with more detailed information regarding this situation. Ship for power number three. What is their person thinking? Five of Wands. Hmm. I didn't expect, you know, after all of this, I didn't expect to see this. This is a lot of internal conflict. This is a lot of internal conflict in them regarding this situation. This and the Eight of Pentacles. It's interesting, the Eight of Pentacles has come up for the past two readings. There's something of a frenetic overthinking when it comes to this person and this situation. There's a frenetic overthinking and overanalysis of this that's coming through in terms of what they're thinking. So in this period of no contact, what are they thinking? And there's a freneticism, there's an obsession with their energy in terms of them thinking about this situation. Hmm... Oh God, I don't like, to, mm, these vibes are interesting. Okay, what else regarding for pile number four and their person? Yeah, okay, I'm getting this now. Yeah. They are spiraling into a situation that is, this no contact's not gonna last for too long. With this Knight of Pentacles and Empress, I'm, I'm being shown that what they're thinking is they are coming back to you. Notice he's coming towards her with the Pentacle in hand. They would be coming to you either with an offer. They view you really highly. They, view, they think of you all the time. They think of you often. Dare I say that they're obsessed in terms of not being with you. They can't tell the wood from the trees. They're really suffering anxiety, sorrow, loss. They have a lot of obsessive, it's coming through as obsessive thinking. Whether it's obsessed, it makes it sound really bad. Whether it's as bad as it looks, I don't, you know, that's up for you guys. But they are, you're very heavily on their mind. Let's put it that way. They feel whatever this is, they feel really bad about it and they want to reconnect with you. So in this period of no contact, that's what um, they are thinking. Okay? That's what they're thinking. What do they, what else do they think about you though? So in this period of no contact, they're thinking about you. How do they view you? Because you could be possessive about someone and obsessed about someone and you could be very sorry, but are your intentions in the right place? Okay, so let's ask that question. So, oh, these cards are slippery. So what are their intentions towards you? Are they pure intentions or are they just coming from a position of ego? What are their intentions towards you? What are their intentions towards you? Oh, thought so. Okay. All right, here we go. What are their intentions towards you? Yep. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. You can never judge a book by its cover, can you? One more. I don't do reversals, yet we have a reversal. We have the two of wands and we have the five of swords. Perfect, okay. And we have the hangman. Okay, so pile number four. What we are picking up here regarding this person. This person likes to be in control, all right? With the emperor and the hierophant. They like to be in control. They like for things to go their way. So pile number four, you are not playing ball with this person. And because you're not playing ball, that's giving them anxiety. They're upset, like it's obsessive compulsive. I was using that term earlier and I was just like, ah, is that the right term? But they're confirming that it is sort of the right term to use. As I said, this is going to be a brutally honest reading. We have the emperor, we have the hierophant. Things have to be done their way. 
They are judge, jury, executioner. Everything has to be done their way, the way they want it. Okay, that's what I'm picking up with this person. So once you come back in the fold and once they think that they have you, then they would settle down and they would feel settled and they would expect things to go back to the way it was. What I'm saying, the reason why I say that is that we have a two of world, two of wands reverse. So two of wands talks about you guys, pal, what they are afraid of, pal number four, is you guys moving on without them. They are very much afraid of that. So pile number four, you have been warned. What they would want to do, as what I'm seeing with the hangman, is that they would want to keep you stuck in limbo. You being in limbo is them at least exerting some control, at least if you don't, and preventing you from moving on. That's what they prefer. If they, if you, if they can't have you, no one else should. And it's not even a matter of having you, but it's a matter of still wanting to exert that control and to exert that influence over you that's what i'm seeing i'm also seeing here with the with the judgment reverse so judgment talks about having realizations and moving on right where these are your guardian angels who are whispering who are letting you know okay it's time to move on these are the lessons but it's reverse that is because with the five of swords here and the judgment reverse, he, whoever this person is, is going to want to come back in your air. And I'm being told that the drama could potentially in the future, like they want, there is a connection. Somebody is reaching out to someone else. There's going to be a connection and you're going to try it for a little while, but then you're going to meet the same stumbling box again and it's going to cause further arguments with this five of swords. So you guys are going to, if you guys haven't, I'm being told that this is a cyclical thing. So you guys may be in that cycle until with this hangman energy, you see what you notice that the, how her feet are tied here. That is the thing. And their feet are tied. You're tied up by the vines. It's like you can't get out of this situation. Hence the reason why the judgment is reversed. The judgment talks about moving on and leaving this situation, learning the lessons that you have to learn and leaving and moving on. But you're caught in this challenge, you're caught in this cycle of needing to have the last word or someone needs to have the last word or trying to give it another go or trying this, then it doesn't work. Let's try that and it doesn't work. Whereas someone just needs to draw a line here because this doesn't look as... But that's what I'm saying. I'm not telling anyone what to do, but that's just the situation that I'm getting from this. On the other side, though, what I am seeing is that with the Six of Wands and the Ace of Cups, you guys would eventually move on from this. It wouldn't be immediate. It would take some time. But you guys would eventually learn, your, learn lessons from this situation, understand your worth and move on. And when you do, there's a fresh, beautiful, fantastic new beginning with this Ace of Cups ready for you. Your cup in terms of how you view yourself and how you value yourself is going to be running over. And notice with this person down on their knee giving you an offer, there is another relationship on the horizon that's there for you. But with this death card, it's going to take really leaving this situation behind for good. All right, so pile number four. I did not expect that reading to go that way. I am telling you, I did not expect that. But I hope this reading resonated with you. If it did, let me know down below, like and subscribe, or you could check another pile in this reading, or you could check other readings on my channel, okay? Thank you guys, see you in future readings. Bye for now.